Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, so from what I understand, it's it's very much uh, within the privacy threat modeling is very much within the initial phases, right? In the design phase, but however, it should be applied still throughout the process, especially when testing testing the system as well, just to ensure that that the threats are actually uh, dealt with. Um, I'm talking a bit about a bit about uh, applying privacy threat modeling. Um, I know you both helped in the development of the Lindum privacy privacy threat modeling uh, methodology. Uh, I understand it's a very important methodology, and it was even introduced in the NIST, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so could you maybe explain what it is and what it's used for, and maybe examples of of where it's used in the industry already? Um, yeah. Sure. Um, so it was created again. I have to count. I think 12 years ago. Uh, and we've uh, updated it uh, a couple of times. We're actually working on, a, on an update now, so stay tuned. Uh, we will soon release uh, some more information. So the, the, the idea is, actually, the, the origin story is we, we've been working on a, um, a research project. We've, uh, we were responsible for the security analysis, so we've applied Stride. And then we collaborated with people for the privacy analysis. And... Well, we realized in the field of privacy, there is no such thing as privacy threat modeling back then. So that made us wonder, like, how can we help here? So we, we looked at what we like about Stride and we, um, um, well, updated that for privacy as well. And we've been doing that ever since. So the idea is that we stick to the, the same four questions that we men mentioned before, um, but that we introduce their privacy knowledge on privacy concerns, on privacy issues, on um, suggestions for privacy mitigations. And we bundle that according to the um, seven Linden categories, which are linking, identifying, and so on. Um, we um, started with, again, in line with Stride, with some uh, threat trees that capture all that knowledge, uh, the, 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 the threat um, issues. Um, the threat types, um, but we we noticed that well, as Aram mentioned earlier, people will get started with just brainstorming about the high level categories, and that's great. But you need a lot of expertise to pull that off properly. So we were looking like how can we meet in the middle, still get some additional information there, but not overflowing them with all that information in the threat trees and in a very systematic approach. So a couple of years ago, we introduced the Linden Go cards, which is a more lean approach to applying basically the same knowledge, but it's um, I, I have a deck here. <laughs> um, but uh, so it has uh, some guidance questions to help you think about what um, is a threat about and does it apply to your specific system. Again, in line with Stride, because for Stride, there's also um, a Cartec elevation of privilege uh, game that will is a more gamified version on how to, to do that properly. Um, well, we mentioned that there is, uh, we noticed that there is uh, that need for people to have like different shades and, and, and different shapes and sizes of how to apply threat modeling. So that also triggered us now to revise our foundation once more to get like the basis straight so we can extract um, a very more extensive formal approach, uh, a support for a formal approach to get a more lean approach out of that, but all from the same foundation so we can better um, accommodate uh, the different needs of the different um, privacy threat modeling analysts. So that's up and coming. So stay, stay tuned. Uh, it will hopefully soon be released on the website. Um, Aram, I don't know if you... Uh, yeah, no, you were very extensive. I don't think I have to add anything. Did, did we talk about the difference between privacy and security so far? No, not yet. Oh, okay. I think it's maybe, an important one. Uh, yes. It's an important to mention that uh, it's sometimes confusing and many people get confused. Well, me and Kim obviously never. Uh, that what, what is like security and what is privacy? Uh, well, there is typically no privacy without security, but the a perfectly secure system could still be have, have threats in terms of privacy. And actually there is even a category 
uh, in security and privacy that are contradictory in a way. So having uh, auditability in a, in a system from a security perspective is a great thing. Well, you should have it. Uh, on the other hand, auditability leads to issues in privacy. Uh, so in privacy, you typically want to have deniability. So being able to say, hey, I didn't do that. And if you have perfect security and perfect auditing in place, there is no way that you can. Well, there are ways, but then, then it somehow starts to starts to be in conflict with that uh, category. Uh, that's like the one extreme category, of course, where things contradict each other. But on the other hand, you can, again, have perfectly secure system. Uh, for instance, if you are a dissident uh, in a in a in a, um, a di um, dictatorship country uh, or some oppressed country, and you want to communicate with uh, an agent in the U.S. or in another country, let's say, uh, you could have a perfectly secure system and send perfectly secure messages. But if the government knows that you're sending, just knows the fact that you're sending a message to another country, which is a democratic country. Uh, came over. I mean, that, that, that's, that should give you an idea of like, well, that is an example of a privacy issue while it's perfectly secure. So nobody can, can access it. Nobody can read what you're sending. But the fact that they know that you're sending uh, is, is an issue. It leaks data. Side channel attack. Kim? Yes, yeah. Um, my mind is popping with stuff I want to add, but uh, let's see if I can focus. Um, so the first thing is um, what Aram was mentioning, um, like, well, I have this non-repudiation and plausible deniability. One is a security property, the other is a privacy property. So we have this kind of conflict here. And um, the same for anonymity and confidentiality, people feel like this is a problem. So especially when we talk to security people, they're like, wow, privacy, really? But oh, you make our lives so difficult and we don't like it and can we please ignore it? Uh, but it it shouldn't be the case. I mean, the, the uh, deniability or the, the non-repudiation and plausible deniability I still have to come across an example that really is a conflict, even in an online voting situation where you have a strong need for um, non-repudiation about the fact, well, at least in Belgium and I think in the Netherlands as well, we have to go voting. So we need to have a proof that we voted. Um, so we need that. That's something that we need to, to have. But on the other hand, we Nobody should be able to, to, to know who we voted for. So we need to have plausible deniability about the actual vote, but non-repudiation about the fact that we voted. So within that same action, you can still have non-repudiation and plausible deniability, but it's, it's on, on different elements of it. So it can perfectly coexist. And the same also for... Well, yeah, I want strong authentication because I want to hold people accountable. But you also have all kinds of pseudonymous or anonymous credential kind of solutions that will still allow you to at least hold people accountable in case there is a, a specific issue. But in most cases, do it in a more privacy friendly way. So there's always I think so. At least there's always solutions to do it in a more privacy friendly, privacy aware way. It might require you to to rebuild, rethink the system a bit. Maybe you're focusing too much on that. I want to collect data because data is a new gold, the new gold or the new oil or whatever. And that's still a mindset we need to get rid of. But that's a different discussion, probably. Um, but so, yeah, privacy is different than security. But it shouldn't conflict security um, and privacy is important. Um, if, if you think of you as a as a user of a system, you as a data subject, then it makes total sense that companies will not use data for different purposes and and will act in your best interest. Um, but for the, the organization, that mind uh, shift still still needs to happen. But fortunately, we have GDPR and other legislation that really forces companies to to focus on on privacy as well and integrate it properly and by design. Hey!